Okay, today we're going to go through the book of Revelation. I've already been through this and I've made some highlights. I'm going to discuss things pertaining to the timing of the rapture, the timing of the return of Jesus Christ. And I also have some other notes for interesting things. Now, what I'm using here is a translation made by David Robert Palmer. You can see the web address here where you can download that. And he says anybody can use it. And so I am. Let me get down to the beginning here. Now, the Revelation of John. So the prologue are these letters to the churches. And I'm going to read through them because they're very interesting and there are some key details that help us to understand the reason for the tribulation period and the kinds of things that God expects of us. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show to his servants what things must soon take place, and which he signified when he sent it via his angel to his servant John, who has confirmed as the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ what all things he saw. Blessed are the one reading and those listening to the words of this prophecy and keeping the things written herein, for the time is near. So, keeping the things written herein. So we're told very soon into the book of Revelation that there are some things herein which we ought to keep. John, to the seven churches in Asia, grace to you and peace from him. So John is greeting the people. Behold, verse 7, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, including of those who pierced him. So we're told that even those who pierced him, which means the Romans, and might... Yeah, so which means the Romans, and all the peoples of the earth shall beat their breasts over him. So when he comes, people are going to be beating their breasts. They will be sorry to see him. And he is going to come on the clouds. So we know in which manner he will come. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and fellow, in the oppression and kingdom and endurance in Jesus, was on the island called Patmos because of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. I was in the Spirit during the Lord's day, and I heard behind me a loud voice, like of a trumpet, saying, What you see, write in a book, and send it to the seven churches, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. So we, he's told, so John is given this thing, you're going to see these things, you're going to write them down, and then you're going to distribute it to these seven churches. So now there's a description in the next part of what does Jesus looks like. And, it, and these descriptions come back again. I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in among the lampstands was someone like a son of man, which is an identifier of Jesus, dressed in a cloak, reaching down to his feet, and a gird around his pecs with a golden sash, except his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like flames of fire, and his feet like bronze, as if made to glow in a furnace, and his voice like the sound of many waters. And he was holding in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth was coming a sharp, two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in the strength of it. And when I saw him, I fell down by his feet as though dead. And he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not fear, I am the first and the last, and the living one. And I was dead, and behold, living forever and ever, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. So the holder of the keys, he was dead. They're identifying that this is the Jesus that we know and love. And all these other descriptions, they're going to come back later in Revelation, and those descriptions are used to help us understand exactly who it is. And that's going to be important in understanding the timing of when Jesus is still in heaven and when Jesus comes down to the earth. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things say he who grips the seven stars in his right hand. So it's Jesus. Jesus is saying this. Who walks among the seven golden lampstands. Again, that's a description we just had of the Son of Man. I know your works and your toil and endurance and how you are not able to tolerate evil people and have put to the test those who call themselves apostles and are not and have found them to be liars and you have endurance and have held up for the sake of my name and not become weary. So these are things that Jesus likes, that they endure, that they toil, that they are working, that they do not tolerate evil people. 
Be blessed those who keep the things in this book. So do you think Jesus is calling you to not tolerate evil people, to test apostles and see if they are liars or truly of God? And here, to endure. And this word, of course, endure, is going to be important in reading Revelation. Do not become weary. But I have against you that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, and repent and do your first works. Listen to this part. Repent and do your first works. He's saying, come out of the things that you're doing wrong and go back and do the things that you did in the beginning when you first fell in love with me, when you were zealous to preach the gospel. Perhaps that's what he means. Otherwise, I am coming to you and will remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. What exactly that means, we don't know, but it could mean that he's removing this church to another place, to another city, another continent maybe even, or that he's just taking away the blessing of even being a church, of even belonging to God. We don't know. Either way, it's incredibly undesirable. So you see that God does punish those he loves, and here is a warning of what will happen if this working and repenting is not completed. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. And this word hate right here, uh, this person who did this translation, he has excellent footnotes, excellent footnotes. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Otherwise, I'm coming to you and remove your laps. I'm sorry, I, back, I went back a little bit. To him who overcomes, I will grant to eat from the tree of life which is in the paradise of God. So there's also a promise, right? So God, he hates the deeds of the Nicolaitans, and he says that you should listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. So even though it's popular, and that's why I don't like these subtitles, to the church in Ephesus, it's really to the churches, plural form. Okay? Now, to the next one. And to the angel of the church of Smyrna, right? These things says the first and the last, who was dead and come alive again. So again, we're identifying the speaker it's Jesus. I know your affliction and your poverty, but you are rich. This is so interesting. He says that in the terms of the world, these people are poor, but really you are rich. So God is saying that in some other way, which certainly uh, I believe is spiritual. And the blasphemy of those claiming to be Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. So God is saying right here that there are false uh, people who claim to be people of God and are actually Satanists. So in another place, we're told that Satan transforms into an angel of light. And here we are told that the Satanists claim to be God's people. And this is how they bring in false teachings. And it's so important to be aware that those people are out there and they are working hard to deceive others. And that's why we're going to go through this and see what God says. Don't be afraid of any of the things you are about to suffer. Who, who's about to suffer? People are going to go through trial. God's people. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison. The devil, but he's not released until way into events in the tribulation period. How is he going to throw anyone in? So this is one of the first places where you clearly see that the devil and the believers will occupy the earth simultaneously at the same time. The devil is about to throw some of you into prison so that you may be tried and you will have affliction for ten days. Be faithful until death and I will give you a crane of life. So here again is this kind of endurance. Be faithful until death. Do not give up your testimony for Christ. Do not deny God. Be faithful until death. Which means that death is a possibility. And I will give you the crown of life. And this fact that believers will be killed is going to come up more than a few times in the book of Revelation. He who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Again, the church is not just this one. He who overcomes will certainly not be harmed by the second death. So that's the promise. Overcome, and you will certainly not be harmed by the second death, which is separation from God. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum write, These things says he who has the sharp two-edged sword. Again, it's Jesus. He's the one with the two-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan's throne is. Yet you hold fast to my law and have not denied my faith. So he's saying, you are in a place where there is much wickedness, but you keep my law and you did not deny my faith. So again, do not deny God 
and keep the laws, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death near you, where Satan lives. So they even have killed one of these people, and yet they did not sway. But I have a few things against you, that you have some there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat idol sacrifices, and to commit sexual immorality. Now, it's common in the church today to say to avoid sexual immorality, but God is exactly calling it out right here. But another thing is very interesting, to eat idol sacrifices. Today, there is halal food. Part of the process in making something halal for the Muslims is that they offer the food as a sacrifice to their demon god, Allah. So, do not eat halal food. Look at the packaging and see if it says halal. Don't eat it. So also, in the same way, you have some who hold to the teachings of the Nicolaitans. No one is really sure what the teachings of the Nicolaitans are, but apparently they're extra-biblical teachings or even counter-biblical. Repent, therefore, otherwise I am coming to you soon and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So he's... If you don't repent, then again, there's a penalty. He will come and fight against you. Who will fight? Jesus will fight against you. So you don't want to be on the wrong side of Jesus. So again, he's calling people to come out of wrong behavior. So there's an emphasis on behavior and works that we are already seeing in here. He who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Another repetition of this. He who overcomes... I will give to him from the hidden manna, and I will also give him a white stone. And on the stone a new name is written, which no one knows except the one receiving it. Again, he who overcomes. But what are we overcoming? Well, certainly overcoming sinful behavior, simple, uh, certainly overcoming laziness, because there are works being done that God is approving of, and even calling people back to. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, these things says the Son of God, he who has his eyes like flames of fire and his feet like glowing bronze. I know your works and love and faith and service and your perseverance, how your last works are greater than your first. Again, I, he's talking about their works of faith and service and again, perseverance again. So we see this kind of an idea, perseverance, endurance, faithfulness. You have to move forward unwavering with their strength coming from Jesus with our feet upon the rock. But I have against you that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and teaches and leads my servant astray to commit sexual immorality. So again, before God was approving of coming against the Nicolaitans, of testing the false apostles, right? And now he's saying that he's unhappy that they have not come against this Jezebel, but that they've tolerated her, that they've allowed her to continue. So something we should not do is tolerate wicked people, false prophets such as this one, false teachers such as this one, who leads people astray to commit sexual immorality, and again this, to eat things sacrificed to idols. And I have given her time to repent, and she is not willing to repent of her sexual immorality. So God is saying that he is a God who gives time to repent, but she refused. This idea of refusing to come out of sin comes up over and over again in this book of Revelation. And, and this is one of the main themes, is that people are being called to repent and to come out of things like sexual immorality. Behold, I am casting her onto a bed, along with the ones committing adultery with her, for an affliction of great magnitude, unless they repent of her works. So now, again, God is going to bring upon them something of great magnitude. And her children I will destroy in death, and all the churches will know that I am he who searches minds and hearts, and that I will pay to each of you according to your works. I'm going to read that last phrase again. I will pay to each of you according to your works. Now, people all come against works, but apparently God and Jesus find it to be of some great importance in his messages to the churches because he's mentioning it every time. And to the rest of you in Thyatira, I say, as many as do not hold to these teachings, the ones who have not known the deep things of Satan, as they say, which in the world today we call the occult, 
as they say, I am not laying any further burden upon you, except what things you have. Hold on to them until I come. Again, hold on to them until I come. Persevere, endure. And he who overcomes and keeps my works to the end, I will give him authority over the nations. So, so this is talking about the thousand years that people will uh, be with Jesus judging. And he will rule them with a rod of iron, shattering them to pieces like pots of clay, even as I also have received from my Father, and I will give to him the morning star. He who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And to the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. We already know this is Jesus. I know your works, how you have the name that you are living, and you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things that remain, which are about to die. For I have not found your works complete before my God. So they have some works that they've started, but somehow are not complete in some way. Remember, therefore, how you received and how you heard and maintained that and repent. So he's saying these people received, they heard it, and apparently they started some works, but somehow they backslid. And now he's calling them Go back to that first thing. Remember what you received and how you heard it and maintain that and whatever they have now, not that thing. Repent of whatever they're doing now. And then, if you are not watchful, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come upon you. This wording is so interesting. If you are not watchful, I will come like a thief. So people read these phrases where in the scripture where it's saying, I will come like a thief in the night. But to the people who are not watching, because here it says, if you're not watchful. So there's some kind of an idea that if you are watchful, when he comes, it won't be like a thief. But you do have a few names in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they will walk with me in white, because they are worthy. He who overcomes in this way shall be dressed in garments of white, and I will never wipe his name out of the book of life. And I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So people are always hoping for this day when the Advocate confesses our name because we have not denied Christ on Judgment Day. Jesus is our Advocate before God on his throne and we want to be found worthy. And here he's saying that there are a few names who have not defiled their garments. So again, often defilement refers to some kind of sexual immorality. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things says the Holy One, the True One, the One holding the key of David, who opens and no one closes, and closes and no, one's op and no one opens. I know your works. Again, he's talking about the works. Behold, before you I have provided an open door, which no one is able to close. How you have little power, yet have kept my word, and have not denied my name. So again, keeping the word, not denying the name even if they have little power. Behold, I will bring the synagogue of Satan, of those claiming to be Jews and are not, but are lying. So again, there's this mention of these false Jews. Behold, I will make them such that they will come and fall down before your feet and know that I have loved you, because you have kept my word about endurance. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which is about to come upon the whole inhabited earth, to try those dwelling on the earth. So this thing coming upon the whole earth, that's not some regional conflict that happened in Philadelphia at any time in history. It's the global tribulation. You need to keep this word about endurance. So you will be blessed who keep the things of this book. Keep your endurance. Do not waver. Do not fall back. Do, do not do any of the things that God is writing to these churches saying, I'm unhappy with this. Don't tolerate false prophets, false teachers. Challenge the apostles to see if they're true. Those are the kinds of things we ought to be doing without wavering consistently. We need to endure in these right works. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which is about to come upon the whole earth, to try those dwelling on the earth. So why is it? Now, some uh, pre-tribbers, they want to argue the tribulation period is not for the church. But that is incorrect, because here it says to try those dwelling on the earth. This is the point, that this, that this hour of trial is going to come to try those dwelling on the earth. I'm coming soon. Hold fast to what you have, so that no one takes away your 
your reward. So again, he's tying this not to a one-time altar call when you were 17, but he's saying hold fast to what you have so that no one takes away your reward. So there's some kind of an idea that it's possible to lose your reward. Now our treasure is, of course, in heaven, right? It's not of the earth. So he who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will never depart outside any more. And I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God and also my new name. And to the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. So again, it's Jesus. He's saying each time, this is Jesus saying this. I know your works, that you are neither hot nor cold. I would rather you were either hot or cold. Thus, because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spew you out of my mouth. So again, it's coming down to works. You're talking about the works. Because you say, I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched and pitiful and poor and blind and naked. I counsel you to purchase from me gold purified by fire, so you will be rich, and white garments, so you will be clothed, and your shameful nakedness not exposed, and salve to anoint your eyes, so you will see. So he is really trashing these people. They think they're rich because they have wealth, and they think they don't have need of nothing. All their needs are fulfilled by wealth, and he's saying, wow, you have all these other things wrong with you. All whom I love, I punish and discipline. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. So again, he's calling them to repent. And to repent of what? All these other things that they're doing. Trusting in wealth. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes. So, to who? The overcomer. I will grant to sit with me on my throne. Just as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. He who has an ear should listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches.